recording. You ready? Yeah, we're good. It's recording. Yeah, it's recording. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, three, two, one. Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome back to the Table Read podcast. As always, I'm Taj, and um, I usually do a big in- introduction or that. I'm just gonna keep it short. We got a superstar today. We have a bona fide superstar. No cap. Introduce yourself, please, sir. Let the people know who you are. <laughs> Your boy in it. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shay Cole, I guess. This is this is this is this is me. This is me. Mm. It's a pleasure to Shea be Cole. here. You've seen him before. I know what you're thinking. I've seen him somewhere. Like, yes, you have. We're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it. Me and you, we know each other ish. Like, if you don't like we know each other, we don't know each other that well. Like, all well, the first question I was gonna ask is like like who who is Shay Cole? Like your background? How did you start acting? Because I don't know any of that, so I'm, I'm I'll sit back and listen because I'm I'm intrigued I'm intrigued to know as well. So the floor is yours, bro. So um, <clears throat> to be honest, man, I've always been I've always been a bit of this is gonna sound quite cliche, but I've always been the type of person that is very much um a bit of a fool. You get it? Someone that just mm. loves to have a bit and a bit of laugh. So um, I started acting from from secondary school. Um, I want to say year seven, you know, year seven was the first time where I was like, "Bun it, I'm a, I'm a go and I'm gonna audition for this thing," and it was like guys and dolls. But obviously, I was a year seven, so you can imagine now, I've gone with the idea of yeah, 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 <laughs> I'm gonna come and bang this lead role. These men are put on the side, man. So I remember dropping out like a week later. My mum's like, "Oh, do you think?" Yeah, no, honestly, I was like. Who do you, my mom was like, who do you think you are dropping out? I was like, listen, mom, like, I'm not out here to just do, you get it? Like, I actually want to have some words to speak. Like, mm-hmm. you get mm-hmm. that? That's facts though. But yeah, man. So that's where I kind of let like, the plant, the seed was kind of, you know, sowed. Um, and then I did it for GCSC. And then from GCSC, I realized that I actually enjoy this. Um, and then thought, you know what, let's go to Brit school. And from that, I then went to Brit and that's, that's where I was like, boy, this is this is different. Um, mm. And then from Brit, you know, had my gap year because everyone, you know, everyone, but a lot of people, they go, yeah, let's go drama school. And you know how drama school works is like not everyone in the first year gets in. So didn't get in my first year and then just kind of stuck it out, man. And then ended up at Guild Hall School of Music and Drama and mm. then ended up doing other bits and bobs. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. He said it in year seven is when you, when you realized you wanted to properly do acting, was there a specific moment? And I realized in this industry, like at any moment you can just go, you know what, I'm done. Like this, it's not for me, it's too hard. Like it's just, it's just a bit too much. Was there a specific moment that if you think you can remember where you were like, yeah, like this is for me. This is this is the career that I want to be a part of. I want to say when I said, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to, to apply for Brit school, like on okay. a heavy thing. I did a guy, no, not a guys and dolls. I did a, a bouncers performance it's called bouncers i can't remember who it's by who the actual playwright is but when i did that i was like yeah this is fun like i'm out here acting like a geezer like a proper geezer that's a security guard and stuff and i'm just like i can do whatever i want and every and like and like it's allowed you know what i mean like, <laughs> i can I, whatever like i can scream i can shout and no one's going to tell me to be quiet like the only thing they're going to say is like you know what just tone it down a bit or not even tone it down a bit but how about you shout at this moment in time instead of that moment mm. in time I mean, you can't shout we're in a lesson right now and I was like right I have free reign so that's when mm. I was like yeah this is this is this is this is lit what would you say was the difference between um doing theatre at Brit school and then going to Guildhall because me and theatre and Brit I liked it but I just couldn't keep up with like the scheduling like it was just a bit too much for me and people always told me um well if you can't handle this you thought like, Brit was too cool. much for you time- bro. Okay, there we go. This is, my, this is my question. What's drama school saying? Because isn't drama school like times 10 when it comes to Brit? Yeah, times 50, bro. Like, drama school's a joke. Like, I remember to the extent where I'm like, this ain't healthy. Mm. These men probably will guard me down for saying it. But like, I've said it in front of teachers. I've said it in front of everyone. Like, the hours that they give you at drama school, personally, I don't think are healthy. Because... Mm especially as young people we need to be able to interact with other young people we need to be able to live our life we are also still growing as individuals so with drama school because like i'll be real like during our musical project we were doing seven day weeks bro monday Mm -hmm. to sunday i'm thinking it's too much man 
too much bro but i will i will have a, i will have my fun regardless so i will you know i will go out and party and still come into rehearsal and do my thing <laughs> but like <laughs> you get it? like i'll still have my thing but you know for for other people it's not it's really not the way man like people need to be able to go and see their family uh, especially those that aren't actually london based people like if they want obviously to go up, yeah back to scotland wales ireland wherever you are like you need to have time to you know contact your parents go and see your people it grounds you right um mm. so i feel like drama school need to actually be aware of that and actually sort that out but like man if you if you thought brit was <laughs> so Bro. happy you didn't go you didn't go to drama school. i trusted my instincts man one thing i was always told about like anything like drama school in my circumstance for example like my mum was out to me oh um let's say you go to a drama school and then you book like a mad role what are you gonna do i was like ah i don't know you know i don't i don't know if it has happened to anybody um you're in drama school aren't you i am in drama school i'm pretty sure you booked a mad role i'm pretty like something's telling me you booked something mad while you were in drama school i don't know no, I'm I don't know. <laughs> shay played alex Weetle in small acts Steve McQueen's Golden Globe nominated Small Axe lead. You've seen it. it. He killed it. He did his thing. He was amazing. Like, honestly, honestly, apart from Mangrove, because I was in Mangrove, <laughs> apart from Mangrove, Alex Sweet was my favourite episode. Was my favourite episode. At first, because I knew you and you were in it, but when I watched it twice, I was like, nah, nah this, is, this is special. This is really, 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 really good. Really, really you just got in, I got really, really invested because I knew nothing about Alex Sweet at all. So not only am I learning about his story, it also helps when the performance feels so real. I feel like I'm watching his story for like first hand. I didn't feel like he was an actor playing him. I felt like I was really watching him live his life over and over again. What was that like, man? The audition process, first day on set. I don't know. I don't even know what to ask. There's too much to talk about, man. I'll leave it to you. I'll leave it to you. Um, yeah, let's start from the beginning, I guess. Mm. Um, again, that's a big compliment. So thank you so much, bro. Like, Bro. I want to reiterate that. So thank you. Okay. Um, so yeah, from the start, bro. I mean, I was in my first year at drama school, just a normal guild hall head, gas to be at guild hall, gas to mm. be around all these different types of people. But then also really, really annoyed that we're just standing in a space for how many hours doing whatever. So I'm coming out of a movement class now and I'm out of this movement class and I look at my phone and my agent's giving me a call. Uh, let's rewind actually i got my agent in my gap year at guild hall um mm. i got my agent then um working at catford theater <laughs> um Gang. me and my agent we've been auditioning for about a year in my gap year and we had a chat about drama school and i said to her look man we have to keep auditioning we have a good thing going so if there's a role that you feel that will propel my career up then let's do it or a really exciting role that you feel will come once in a lifetime then let's do it um and i'm coming out of a movement session now hot sweaty in these tights thinking i'm a bit of a waste man you know if the man them saw me now in these tights <laughs> what, what i'm gonna say type type things going through my head <laughs> like yeah like and then, <laughs> i see him miss call boom call her back Shay, I've been trying to get hold of you. Like to the extent like she Instagrammed me, like because about, I was in a lesson, so oh, rah. Instagram DM me, emailed me, left numerous voicemails. I'm thinking, rah, wah, go on. like boom, called her back. Shay, where are you from? Where are you from? Uh, whoa, bit of a rat. I'm, I'm Nigerian, half Nigerian, half Sierra Leone. I'm like, well, wah, go on. She's like, ah, you can't, you can't go up for this. Go up for what? Well, basically, you got a Steve McQueen role. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who? Steve McQueen. I was like, are we talking about the same Steve McQueen? She's like, <laughs> Shh, I'm thinking, damn. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> so at the end of that conversation, it was like, sorry, there's nowhere to go here. You could you can't. I was like, cool. But my boy G Day, who's from the New York, from New York, and you know what these Americans are like, man, like especially New York actors, like these lot work hard and these yeah. are huge personalities. So my bro was like, yo, bro, like. Did you did y'all just say Steve McQueen? Like, damn. I'm thinking, yeah, man. I just said Steve McQueen, bro. Like, what's good? He was like, bro. He's like, you call your agent back right now. You tell her you good, bro. Like, you you beg for that shit, man. You oh, I shouldn't have sworn. You beg for that, like, you know. So <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. 
I called her back now and I was like, hey, Zoe, like, I can do this, innit? Like, I have bare Jamaican friends. Like, I have bare Caribbean people, like, just around me, surrounding me. So let's just try. I said, I won't let you mm. down. Um, and she was like, all right, cool. Then she didn't call me, didn't message man for about six weeks. She then calls me back and was like, you've got a general meet with Gary Davey. So I was like, damn. I was like, all right, cool, let's do this, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> And he just looked at me like he has this thing about him. I don't know what it is, but he's very good at reading character and feeling someone's, you know, energy. And like, so he was just staring at me and just like listening to what I had to say, how I'd react, how I was acting. And in a general meet, for those that don't know that are listening, a general meet is where you don't actually audition. You just have a chat. Like, yeah, to know just sit down. You know, you, you know yourself. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. A, now an actor, Mr. Mr. <laughs> so you're out here, bro. Um, also, big up. Cause I used to watch that before you were in it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Death, Death of Paradise. Yeah, bro, Yay. me and my mum, like, we, we used to watch that on a regular basis, man. So. I feel like everyone used to watch it with their mums or their, or their grandma or something. You know my mum? Yeah. Say it about me. Say it about me. Do you think? Do you think? No, you know my mum? Come, 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 come. Oh, yeah. You, you get some of the, the glory. <laughs> my mum nah, mom called me in it and was like, oh, have you been watching Death of Paradise? I'm like, no, not really. Not really. She's like, oh, there's a young man in there, isn't it? Like, I don't know if you know him, but he's like, he's great. I was like, really? I was like, Bruh. it's about Taj. He's, like, he's amazing. He's like, he's like, he's coming from like this background. He's a bit of a, like a live wire, but I love him. <laughs> Big up, Mumsy. <laughs> so yeah, man. So me and Gary are just vibing, and um, he then tells me, and this is what's so mad is that like God just had his plan, and there was nothing that was going to stop this from happening. So Gary from day dot was like yeah we're gonna get your dialect coach and i was like hold on a second wow. like i haven't even like you haven't even heard me read for the role you know what i mean yet you're mm. all, all out here getting me dialect coaches he was like here's a dialect coach here's a script pick three scenes from the script that you want to do and let's play so i'm thinking damn okay <laughs> this ain't no joke like you know what i'm saying so mm. He even got his assistant in um, was just like, what do you think? And his assistant was like, because obviously the whole issue is, is that I'm not, what we want with these small like stories as well is that we want them to be authentic. Like we want them to actually, you know, be very truthful to the Caribbean experience. Mm -hmm. So it was one of them ones where if he looks, looks to Nigerian, looks to African, whatever, but mm -hmm. I didn't fit that box so it was like rah no like he he he, he don't, you, you wouldn't put him in a nigerian box you wouldn't put him in a like he just he can just mold so mm. i was really lucky but man yeah so long story short i have my first audition i go through the i pick three scenes do them and then gary goes yeah you're gonna meet steve mcqueen next week and i said whoa, whoa. <laughs> you yeah, <imagine>? I did. <laughs> i'm still in my my first year at drama school, bro. Like mm. he's saying all this stuff. So I'm thinking, damn. But like, I went to a Q and A when I was a lot young, like still at Brit with Daniel Kaluuya. And Daniel Kaluuya said, he was like, industry will feed you with a lot of gas, like a lot of gas. He said, take every bit of gas with a pinch of salt. So I'm like, yeah, I'll meet Steve McQueen next week. Whatever, in it, whatever. I actually met him, not next week, but I, you know, I met him and it's like, damn, okay. <laughs> Um, and yeah, man, so boom, met him, did the ting. There was a lovely monologue at the end, which didn't actually make the final cut of the film, but, um, you know, and I just directed it straight at Steve and I was just like, look, that's big up Hazel though. I think Hazel was like, Hazel, yeah. Hazel, you know what I'm saying? She mm. was a plug and she was like, nah, if you feel that you can do this, just do it at Steve. So I did this whole monologue. I did, I just aired the camera and I just looked Steve straight in his eyes and I was just like, mm, this is for you. You get it? this is, mm. you're going to. <laughs> Did it to him. A few days later, man's got the role. Mad experience, mad vibe, working with a genius, leading it. And like when you lead something in it, you don't just like, it's when you lead something, you kind of like set the tone and set the bar of um, how everyone, not ev how everyone else acts, but like the vibe of the rest of the set, apart from the director, obviously, but you Ooh. know.
it was a good, 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 good experience. Really fun experience, but difficult. Small Axe releases now. Amazon, BBC One. What was that reaction like from like your family and your friends? Like seeing you first of all in a project. Because like, even for me, like playing Kendrick, um, it wasn't it wasn't even about the role I was playing. It was just being a part of something that spoke about like my grandparents' experience and what life was that for them back in the day. That was what they were going more mad about rather than my role. So not only are you in something really, really important for like, I don't know, um, your family or grandparents, whatever, back in the day, you're also leading it. You're also, you're also the lead. So what was that? Because I, I, my family would have went flipping dummy if I was leading. Even my small part, they would have went mad. So what was that like, man, when, when it finally released and your family are watching it, your friends are watching it and, and all sorts? Yeah. Um, even thinking about it, it gets me a bit emotional in it because mm. you we have a dream bro in it we have a dream we know where we're heading and we know what we want to do but your family because they have to if you have a good family have to support it no matter okay. what you do, they just have to regardless it's like mm. all right if that's what you want to do you know what i'm saying do it but they have to have a plan b you know plan c whatever <laughs> whatever that rubbish means um <laughs> but like <laughs> when um they saw it it, it was mad like my mum come to me and was like I just didn't know you could do that you know what I mean like I, I, like I didn't know you could do such a thing my uncle called me and I wasn't taking calls like that that after I watched it I wasn't taking calls to the extent Steve called me I like I didn't even have it like he called me great I didn't know who is who, who it was so I aired the call and he messaged <sighs> me he goes like it's Steve in it and I was like oh damn <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. Like I didn't know, but um, yeah. Like I was just in a very and my my uncle called me and I said, you know what? The only person I'm gonna speak to is family. And my uncle called me, so I answered the phone and he was like, he was just in bits, and I've never seen like my uncle. Like I was crying, he was crying. He said, what you don't know about me is that you have literally told my story on screen. He was like, I went from foster care, foster home to foster home. I was someone that was very much an outsider, someone that had anger issues that they just thought was, you know, an angry black boy that just had no parent, no grounding, but mm. you, you don't know that story. You get it. So it was a lot. Um, one thing I have to big up my uncle is that my uncle and my mum as well, but my uncle so much so is that he's always, I feel he's always knew the fire and the passion and the passion and the talent was always there. Mm. So it wasn't like, about me being on the screen. It was more about the story that was being told that hit him. But for, I want to say, for my friends, it was more like, oh, damn, Shay talks a lot. You know, Shay cut from Langley at, you know, at, you know, 15 and then went to Brit school. But Ra, he went from Brit to straight. You know what I mean? It's like, hold on a second. People talk a lot. Like people will leave school and go to <laughs> and like whatever and their football team, or whatever. But like, he's there. Mm. Like he's alongside the Boyegas, the Letitias, the the Michael Wards, like these household names, you know. So it um it was something for them as well, you know. When they just it's one of them when they just look at you, and it's just like they ain't got something to say. In that look, the look says it all. Mm. it's not even about what they have to say it's just the way they look at you after they've just seen what they've seen and that's when you're just like whoa we've really done something here and you deserve it bro you deserve it every single little speck of all of it you deserve it all big up you man so a project that is not yet to be released yet a means boxing day that unless i've been missing something i don't know anything about it at all and i think that's a good thing so my question was going to be tell us about it but at the same time don't tell us about it like keep <laughs> obviously you know what you can and you can't say but what can the audience expect from the film your character um yeah all of that well, this is the part that i'm really bad at man if you put me on jonathan ross graham norton then he told me to expect <laughs> it today, i'll be baffled bro i'll be like ah. <laughs> it is about a caribbean family in the uk and about the misdemeanors that go on my mum i play a male means brother by the way i'm okay. pretty sure i that i've said it now so whatever <laughs> if not let me know let me know I'll, I'll, I'll cut it if not we're part of a family uh amel tamara myself we all play siblings tamara lawrence we all play siblings um and 
someone does something that they shouldn't have done, which causes a ruckus in the family. Okay. And then a male comes back with someone that the family aren't aware of, which is the fiance from, from the States. Mm-hmm. Um, and it causes a ruckus really and truly, I'm not going to lie, but it's oh, also it's set around Christmas time. Let's rewind. It's a romantic comedy <laughs> set during Christmas, first and foremost, um, based around a black family, man. And really and truly what I love about this is that it's a story not based around our struggle, our trauma. It's just a based around people going through normal human interaction. And it's just one of them, man. Like it's one of them where it's good vibes, good fun, good laughs. And it's black people smiling, bro. <laughs> it's black people mm. smiling. That's what we love to see. Laughs. And it's about a, a Boxing Day party that goes wayward. I know what I'm going to say if Graham Norton calls me now. It's about a boxing <laughs> That's the one, bro. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. It looks. I saw the little clip you posted Um, um, when you were doing that, that stunt, the thing you posted, that stunt. Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, oh, this looks hard. This looks hard. <laughs> I was like, this looks hard. I'm loving that. But this final question is a question that nobody likes, but I'm um, keeping it in anyway. The question is, what is your best attribute? Or, or, because that might be a bit of a waste of my question to answer. What has been your proudest moment so far of your career or life or whatever? Up to you. That is a waste man question. I know, man. I love it. It's, I love it. That's why you see me smiling. <laughs> but keep it in there because it, it, it rocks people in it. It rocks people. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I think the attribute is a bit too much blowing smoke up my own bum. So I'm not going to answer that. But I will say <laughs> in terms of my proudest moment, I really think, I want to say probably getting into Guildhall, you know, bro, because mm. like I didn't get in my first year and a lot of people can be really, really, like they can just stop, man. Especially when, especially when you put so much time, effort, you know, you're doing all these speeches, you're doing Shakespeare, like you're putting your all into it. You're paying all this money, like 60 quid an audition. Mm. Then you're meeting all these different people. And I'm going to stress all these white people that you're just like, oh man, like, are you going to take me for me? Or am I going to have to be someone that I don't, you know, don't really want to yeah, be? Exactly. It's, it's a horrible, horrible situation. And i would never, ever compromised myself. And I'm so happy that I've never, ever compromised myself to get to where I am. Like I, I, one thing I pride myself on is that I'm licking no one's bum to get to where I have to be. Regardless, mm. you get it. I ain't, I ain't doing any of that rubbish. Like you take me for who I am. You take me or leave me. So, you know, it. when I got, that disappointment in my first year that I didn't get into any drama schools it was it was upsetting and I cried facts I cried to my mumsy um a lot of prayer during prayer man just broke down I was what am I gonna do like I ain't got money like this to to then reapply but you know big up open door my guys you know went into (laughs) you got a bit of help and then yeah God willing and you know by God's grace I got into Guildhall and I, I always wanted to get into Guildhall like I knew as soon as I stepped into that school that Guildhall was a school for me so I'm just really I was really blessed and really happy that I got the opportunity to just better myself and deepen my craft and just meet a whole good bunch of good people um, that I'm sure some of them I will be friends with for the rest of my life so yeah man. Oh bro we're gonna wrap it up here uh, I don't know what to say Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank, I you gave me way more than I was like. That was brilliant. Like, just thank you. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you for thank you for what you did on the small acts. Thank you for jumping on here today. Thank you for for talking about what you talked about, giving us some more insight on you know your personal life, things that people don't see. Obviously, everyone sees you know the final product of you know what you see on screen, but no one really sees the hard work and the struggle and all the the madness that happens behind the scenes to get to that point. So yeah, man. Thank you very much. Where can the people find you, bro? Watch any socials, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Yeah. Um, Twitter at Cole Shay. Um, Shay, I hope you know how to spell S H E Y I. I got it. Don't worry about it. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Insta is Shay again. 
I thought I'd be a bit uh, urban, not urban, <laughs> a bit like edgy. So it's not Shay Cole, it's Shay C X L E because whatever. Um, so I yeah, like it, I like whatever. it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, once again, thank you. Um, we're gonna need this here. Uh, the audio for this will be on Spotify as usual, so go ahead and check that out if you don't look at my ugly face. But uh, until next time, we'll see you guys in a bit. Much love.